correspondent from Sydney and from Australia, Jackie Lane, and she joins us now. Jack, good to see you again. You looking good, dear? Looking good. Yeah. Always, always trying, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, what's the, uh, just if, because people will be seeing this on YouTube and uh, on the, um, the platform later on, what's the painting you've got over your left shoulder in the background? Uh, uh, okay, so it's um, it's a limited edition lithograph from uh, an Australian, well-known Australian painter, um, Arthur Boyd. And of. Um, he's the, um, of a, um, well, really of some trees and a big kind of rock behind it. Oh, um, okay, so it's nowhere precise well, that you've visited and means something to you or anything like that. Uh, not, not specifically. Um, it's more that I like the colours, and he's a yeah, well known nice. now dead artist. Um, oh, and the, the, the red, guy. the red trees, yeah, the, the red trees are flame trees, which are very iconic Australian. And he painted down in the Southern Highlands area in a place called Bundanoon. And um, I used to have a farm down there, so it's not of a place where my farm was, but it's of the area. There okay, you go. Very good. Uh, and it looks, I have to say, it looks really nice. It looks it, lovely. Listen, um. We're talking, uh, as you would have heard from my introduction, about a, an extraordinary event. Well, it has the potential to be even more extraordinary. Um, of is it Senator Payman, uh, a former Labor Party uh, senator, who and you elect, I think, your senators through some form of proportional representation over there, who was much lionised by the Labor Party because she was of a young woman of Muslim background. I think was she a refugee originally. Um, and now left the Labor Party um, over an issue which doesn't have the same currency here, I'll come to that in a second, but has started up her own political party. Can you give us a bit of a, because it does seem to have some serious ramifications for religious politics. Yes. Well, first up, she is, um, I heard her on the radio yesterday when she um, announced the name of her party, which is Australia's Voice. Um, which, of course, now has got the um, Indigenous voice to Parliament people up in arms because they think she's stealing their name. So, you know, that's that's a great start there. Um, and she has come out very clearly to say that this is not a Muslim party. Uh, it is um, a party that um, she wants to start so that people who feel their voices aren't heard can be heard and um, the fact that she's a Muslim um, has got inverted commas nothing to do with it. Um, having said that, she's got some fairly clear views about um, the Israel, Gaza and now um, Lebanon war um, and she was saying that she would um, like to see candidates who represent multicultural Australia because she doesn't feel that the two main parties really have significant multicultural representation. So I think you can take from that that her version of Australia's voice is that it has to be less white Anglo-Saxon male. ...from, I see, an Islamic college. I didn't know you had them there, but you've apparently got one in Perth where she was the head girl only a little over yep. 10 years ago. So she's gone from being head girl at the Australian Islamic College in Perth to now, well, starting her own party. Um, yeah. What sort of support is there um, for her? Does she have a constituency um, or is she regarded as being a, a, a singular topic person? Uh, depends <laughs> on who you ask, Michael. I think if you ask anybody in the Labor Party... Um, they will say that she's a single topic person that got there on their coattails and they'll probably do their darndest to keep running that agenda. Um, she's got a guy, sorry, his name escapes me just now, who's known as the preference whisperer who's now advising her and this particular guy has made a career out of working with independents and smaller parties to do what we call here playing the preference game because when you vote here in Australia, 
you can vote what they call above the line or below the line and often um, MPs and senators get in because of the preference deals and swaps that are done. So he's now advising her. Um, so it depends on who you talk to and how threatened that I think they feel. Um, Labor Party's got a big problem in Western Australia, I think, in the next election. Um, so I think um, behind the scenes, I think Labor will be very concerned. She is certainly pitching her party as not a one-issue party, but yet to be seen, to be honest. Okay. Uh, well, on that particular issue, um, Jack, is she, is she likely to pick up the Muslim vote anyhow? I mean, is that a natural constituency for her? Mm, uh, probably, probably, uh, yeah. But how much that is is a really interesting thing because whilst I think politically here there's been much more coverage of other special interest groups over the years, I think the rise of the of Muslim voices, particularly as a result of the Israel-Gaza thing, has become much more prominent and... Um, uh, and so I think that there's going to, it'll be a really interesting election um, given that, that there's so much heat um, in the Muslim community around the lack of real action by the Labor Party around a, a bunch of issues. So it's going to be fascinating to watch. Um, when's the next election in Australia? Is it next year? Ah, yeah, well, good question. I was reading in the, I mean, there was a, um, there was a um, uh, scuttlebutt out there that, that Albanese might run a double dissolution because he can't get any of their policies through the Senate. I think that's unlikely. Um, some news today is that he's put forward the legislative calendar for next year and it looks like he's giving him and, and a, a budget early in March. Election has to be in May. I, I'd be picking that he's going to go early. Um, and there's a West Australian election in early March and he has to probably go before the Easter holidays if he doesn't go in May. So I reckon they'll go early in March is my pick. Next year. Okay, before their budget. Yep. Um, yep. Listen, yeah, they, they, they don't really have, they don't have time to call it before, before Christmas, really. They're yeah, running yeah. out of time. Um, so... Run me past this one again because it's a, it's something that confuses us, I think, a bit over here. We have the occasional nutters who go out there and do the whole Palestine protest things. There was 30 at Otago University this weekend. But those are sort of numbers, you know. They're not large and they're small and it's, it's not very heated um, as a general rule. Australia, wow. I mean, we're just observing from afar, Jack, the incredible emotion that's involved on both sides of the Palestine debate. Very strong pro-jury um, media, the Australian, for example, but also professionals who uh, allege that there is an anti-Semite crusade that has taken place in Australia. On the other hand, as you know, strong Palestinian support uh, from uh, very large and numerous and well-organised rallies. Um, why is there such an intensity given it's such a long way away, Israel and Palestine? Well, it's not a long way away for the Jewish and Palestinian communities. We have quite significant communities here in Australia, <coughs> first, second generation, you know, almost getting into third. Um, these are not insignificant groups of um, people within Australia. Uh, so, and, and typically um, the Palestinian grouping has never really uh, received much um, coverage, um, but the, um, you know, the events of last October and, and are not unfolding. Um, so the Palestinian community, certainly in Sydney where I am, has been running protests in Sydney and Hyde Park every Sunday since last October. Uh, and getting h h tens of thousands of people turning up every Sunday. Um, the, the Jewish communities haven't had so many um, continuous um, protests or vigils, um, but certainly last weekend was a major issue because it was 
Rosh, it's Rosh Hashanah oh, right. here. Yeah. Uh, it was the, it's the first anniversary of the um, of 6th of October. Um, so um, the police actually went to the Supreme Court to try and stop the Palestinian protest, uh, which was a, going to be a big issue. But at the end of the day, both sides kind of came up with a solution that meant that um, we didn't have to test the freedom of speech laws in Australia. Um, so we have significant communities here. And, and also, you know, in Lebanon, we've got also significant Lebanese um, communities here too um, who have family who are there. So um, it's not, you know, given that background, it's not surprising that there's so much um, personal interest because it's not remote for many but there would have been, there would have once been in the Australia that I remember there would have been an, a national intolerance of importing into Australia the problems of the old world or of countries far distant from Australia is there that intolerance not evident to you now 